going to lose my ferro rod. <laughs> Couldn't resist, I'm sorry. If you clip that to your belt loop, you won't have a problem. <clears throat> Alright. Can't get our water boiling here. Gotta get some more uh, fuel for the fire though. Oh yeah, nice. We'll put our ramen in there. We got our two cups of water boiling. Rice ramen. Right there. There's your alternative to pasta, macaroni, whatever. You just simply uh, get some water boiling. Two cups to be exact. Simmer this for about four minutes. And yes, sir. Get yourself a really good meal. Uh, preferably take the seasoning out of the package first. <clears throat> it's always a learning experience. I don't know why I forgot to do that. Take your trash out, always. In the spirit of ramen, uh, I will be eating it with chopsticks. Like the traditional way. These little four dog stove uh, bio stoves, um, they're really slick. All you do is just take your little uh, pieces of dried wood, branches, dead branches, I mean I've got zillions, and you just keep feeding it um, and it works really slick. Uh, I like to use it for a lot of reasons, you know, you don't always want to carry fuel out in the woods. Uh, you know, it's, you've got all this fuel just sitting here, rotting away. I mean, there's no reason you can't burn it. You know, all these dead, dry branches. It works really slick. It doesn't take hardly any effort at all to break up some sticks and just keep feed, feeding the fire, if you will.
yum. This stuff is good, good, good. It's a uh, ramen. Uh, you know, let me let me uh, get this straight. Hold on, I don't want to screw it up. My wife will kill me if I screw it up. It's kind of weird because she says, "Be careful out there, don't get hurt." But if if I screw this up, she'll kill me. So, just kidding. This is a uh, forbidden rice ramen with miso soup. It's by Lotus Foods. You can get a look at it. A lot of people ask me because I don't eat pasta or bread or spaghetti or any of that stuff, and they say, "Well, what do you do?" And it's like there are there are alternatives. This isn't. Uh, it's made with organic rice, um, gluten-free, reduced sodium. Okay, it's not technically health health food, but it's a great alternative, and it fills up it fills you up when you're out here on a cold day, um, checking the deer yards and doing a little rabbit hunting. But uh, really good stuff, and I like to eat it traditionally with my chopsticks. And um, I don't have a cup, so I'm just going to eat right out of the Morris Bush pot, which is a slick little rig, as you all know. But, you know, I get out here and I start pondering um, what it must have been like If you don't know miso soup, if you've never had it, you should give it a try. It's absolutely delicious. And, um, mm, good ramen. I'm glad you would have must have been out here. Um, because I'm out in the deer yard. And because I'm just monitoring them, I'm seeing how they're, you know, what's going on this time of year. Um, but, Back in 1890, uh, the first fishing game detective, B.P. Chadwick, was hired uh, with a salary, I think, of $250 a year to, uh, I think, take care of Coos and Carroll County on snowshoes. And uh, the idea was uh, he was he was out, out in the woods, you know, chasing uh, what they call crust hunters, which were basically guys that were poaching deer or people that were poaching deer. Um, you know, in the wintertime, back when, you know, back then they had three or four feet of snow, when, when the deer yard up in these in these yards, they, they can't really go anywhere, so they cluster up, and it would be pretty easy to, you know, just devastate a population if you were out here trying to hunt deer. But um, basically back then, the, the game warden, or fishing game detective, I guess is what he was actually called, would, um, Strap on a pair of snowshoes and uh, just travel days on end with nothing but a you know wool blanket and, a, and an axe and the means to take care of himself and provide and uh, pretty much sleep wherever night found him out in the woods. You know, it was three below zero last night and I'm out here you know with my snowshoes and I'm nice and warm now. But uh, I'll tell you, man, if all I had was a wool blanket, yeah, it can be done. But those guys were pretty hardy back then. Get a lot of you know. I get a lot of respect for the heritage of um, what it, you know, how what it took to actually survive back then, and uh, you know, to be out after in the interest of conserving wildlife um, was just pretty. I find that pretty interesting. Um, it says a lot about the individual, I think, too. But uh, anywho. And keep my coals going so I can uh, boil up a little bit of water when I'm done with my uh, my ramen. We're in pretty good shape out here. Um, not a lot for them to eat, but this is just pretty much where they you know they spend the winter. And it's a little late in the afternoon, so um, I think they were out here earlier today or yesterday. Actually, earlier today. Because there's some pretty fresh pretty fresh sign around here, but. Um, Stuff delicious. I get a lot of questions. Um, uh, for instance, why don't you uh, why don't you use a ferro rod when you light a fire out in the woods? A few people have asked me that. It's like well, it's a fair enough question, but I never leave the house without one of these, a bic lighter. 
that's my number one fire starter. Um, I know there's guys out there that, you know, they're into the bow drills and the fire sticks and the uh, ferro rods. They live and die by the ferro rod. And uh, I don't necessarily, I mean, that's, it's good. That is definitely a skill, like the bow drill. That is a skill. And you need, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of, you know, hundreds of fires before you're actually good at it. And even then, I think anyone who's very successful at a bow drill fire will tell you, there are days it just doesn't work. So you've got to have a backup plan. Um, I love doing, don't get me wrong, I love doing a fire rod. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ferro rod. This one here um, is from Badger Claw Leathers, uh, who does a lot of custom canvas uh, leather work. Obviously, he has some nice ferro rods. And then I clip it to my belt loop as soon as I'm done with it, so I never lose it. And then it just rides right along in my uh, front pocket. I clip it onto the belt loop right there, and it won't fall off. <laughs> but, because uh, that, would, that, that wouldn't be good. But, uh, you know, basically, today I felt like playing with my ferro rod. Um, as you can see, I, I used uh, as a, I carry jute, uh, jute twine with me all the time because for multitude of reasons. It, it makes a good wick. It's a very good fire starter. Um, it also works, you know, for like any other twine or string for lashing things together or, or whatever you want to use it for. But it's, it's a great fire starter and that's probably my one of my go-to um, uh, tinder, if you will, I guess. Because you can get it at a hardware store. It's cheap, multi-use type of uh, type of product and it works um, as you can see I just got a few I made a little tiny twig bundle um, with some jute twine and boom it had fire um, that's just my preferred method not saying I'm never going to tell you that's the only way to do something there is no such thing as one you know one way is not the only way no matter what you're talking about and uh, you find you find people get kind of set in their ways with uh, different procedures or, or, uh, or uh, you know habitual the way they do certain things like some guys live and die by the bow drill that's the only way that they're going to start a fire and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that um, I'm just saying there's more than one way to skin a cat and you know I guess being a I don't know just an over just an all-around you know, woodsman I guess that's what I, I guess that's what you call me um, yeah, you pretty much, it comes down to practicality most of the time. Um, you know, we're not, this isn't a survival situation. I've never been in a survival situation in the respect that I never went out where I wasn't prepared um, to spend the night or whatever. Lucky, whatever. I've never been in a plane crash. I've never been in a, you know, car accident out west where you're, you know, hundreds of miles from help or whatever, this, that, and the other thing. And those things do happen. But as far as like being in a survival situation, it's just never happened to me because I've always planned out my day or my activity and, you know, it, it was what it was. But um, the trick is it always comes, I mean, I guess the answer is it comes down to preparedness. And if you go out with, you know, I match, I always have Bic lighter matches and I always have a ferro rod. Those are my three fire starters I've done it different ways you know I've done um, I've started fires with flashlight batteries car batteries magnifying glasses um, fire you know bow drills whatever but the reality is I'm out here to either hunt fish camp or whatever I'm really not out here to practice primitive lifestyles if you will I think people who um, like primitive you know uh, uh, primitive fashion if you will they're more apt to uh, you know stick to the bow drill or the fire or the fire drill whatever you call it hand drill you know what I'm talking about we rub the your two hands together with a stick very difficult to do very difficult to do and I'm not making light of that but it's just not my I'm just I'm guess I'm answering a question as to why I don't do that and the question is it's just not my style um, but I admire those who do it on a, on a regular basis um, and the fire rod's a lot of fun, uh, ferro rod rather, is a lot of fun to play with. 
Um, it is waterproof. It'll pretty much work almost underwater. I've done that many a time. So is a Bic lighter, and so are waterproof matches. You know, with those three things, you're pretty much going to get a fire going. And I have to throw in a caveat: as long as you have material around you that will burn. Um, and that's why I like to bring the jute twine because I know I've always got that tinder. I mean, if I can find birch bark, um, swale grass, you know, whatever, any other kind of twig bundles, I do a lot of twig bundles, work very good. Um, but, you know, I, I know I've got the ability to at least start a fire. Now all I have to worry about is finding the material to keep the fire going. And that's pretty much what I live by. But, anyway... So today, I guess I'm out here in the spirit of uh, BP Chadwick and uh, just walking through the deer yards, um, just enjoying, enjoying the day. Uh, very, very lucky, very fortunate to be out here. So I'm going to finish up my ramen and uh, see if I can't jump a rabbit on the way home. I'd really like to have rabbit backstraps tonight. haven't had them in a while. really on a gear kick today if you couldn't tell but one of my favorite pieces of equipment a pair of uh, <laughs> chopsticks I get at Market Basket when I buy my sushi um, I, uh, I like to save them and I actually reuse them and I can get like a dozen uses out of one pair you just go home and wash them off and uh, the old Hidden Woodsman haversack just stick them right in here with my notepad and um, ready for, you know, wash them out and wash them up when I get home and ready for another uh, trip. But the other thing, on the water bottle issue, um, I like a stainless steel water bottle. This is clean canteen. You're all, you've all seen these. But I like it because I can boil this on my four-dog stove, my uh, little biomass stove. Uh, it's pretty slick, so... I mean, a water bottle to me, a lot of guys like the plastic, a lot of people take the plastic ones, but if you can't boil water in it, to me, it's kind of useless. I mean, if you're just out hiking or whatever and you're not going to have fires, that's fine. But And I have plastic water bottles. But um, <clears throat> if you're out here, basically, with a minimal kit, if you will, I th you think about it, everything has to be as multi-use as possible. So why wouldn't you take a water bottle you could boil water in? I mean, I know I can boil it in my bush pot, but say I didn't have the bush pot and all I had was this. So that's why I like a stainless steel water bottle. And there's, I'm not, I'm not boasting clean canteen by any means because there's a million. I mean, a, a stainless steel water bottle is a stainless steel water bottle. You can get it from about anywhere. I just like this particular one for whatever reason. So it works pretty slick. Um, anyway. This little uh, canvas bag is also from Badger Claw, uh, Badger Claw Leathers. I really like his products. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing him at the uh, <coughs> New England Bushcraft Show this spring. Um, and a little four dog stove, a little bush, bush cooker. Um, I am spacing what they actually call this. It's the four dog little, you know. And it also comes with the alcohol burner, so you can burn alcohol in it, which is pretty slick. It fits nice and neat with that little bag from Badger Claw. There's your cook kit right there. And then that works very nicely. Um, and old Hidden Woods. I'm going to strap my snowshoes on and get at it.
Yep, those deer walked right in my tracks that I came in on um, a couple hours ago, whatever it was. Ain't that something? They literally walked right in my tracks. And we got an old rub Not from, you know, earlier this year, but. It never ceases to amaze me, the behavior of animals sometimes. I walked in here a couple hours ago, I don't know, three hours ago, whatever it was, and the deer have, when I was down there in the bedding area, um, which I suspected they had left not long before I got there, on the way out after I had my, my ramen, my noodles, and uh, did a little bit of writing, I come out, those deer walked right up my snowshoe path. Um, they've just chewed it all to, to pieces. It's just interesting why they picked my path to walk in. Because it's not a path that they usually take. I mean, because there's a trail over there and a little bit of a trail over there, but there had been no traffic through here until I came through here looking for a rabbit and they walked out on my tracks. So it's very, they're probably as curious about us as we are them. Anyway, kind of interesting. This is stuff you run into out here.